Welcome back. There was one match this season so absolutely bonkers it deserved an episode all to itself. So let's get to it as quickly as possible. First, we need to get you up to speed on the Conference League. Michelin were our round of 16 opponents, who we dispatched with ease. By ease, I mean we played both legs in kits so similar, it's hard to distinguish what is going on. By ease, I mean we scraped a 1-0 win at their place, before trading blows in a 2-all draw at the Toomba. That sets us up for a quarter-final against Frankfurt. At home for the first leg this time, and behind in four minutes. A Despidov double before half-time. A Katarski calamity straight after. An injury-time red card and a late Samata winner rounded out a five-goal thriller. At the arena herning, it was our turn to pounce on a defensive error and seal our place in the semi-final against Aston Villa. At Villa Park, they laid siege, peppering shot upon shot on Katarski's goal, but only Diaby could find his way past. 1-0. We welcome them to the Toomba for the second leg. I've spoken of the joys of managing outside the Premier League. One such joy is not having to face off against the team I support, and I genuinely feel conflicted. It's just a damn game. A game we are still, perhaps undeservedly, in. And as long as we can hold on in these opening exchanges, bugger. I didn't see anything wrong, but they're checking Cameron, not Zaniolo here. A reprieve. Ooh, that seems harsh. I felt a pang of relief when that was disallowed so maybe I am not as conflicted as I thought. Sorry, Virtual Emery, you're dead to me now. It's been tense, but we're growing into the game, as Suarez hits the bar and Marcos Antonio forces a save. Into the second half, a nil-nil is both a fair reflection and means we're still in with a chance. It does feel, though, like we've lost some of the momentum that was building towards the end of the first. This is actually a competition we've had some relative joy in, reaching the quarter-finals in its inaugural year, so getting to the semis is an achievement in itself, but not entirely unexpected. Getting to the final would be outstanding. Good save, Katarski. And if we can somehow beat Aston Villa, we can surely beat whoever else remains in the competition. We do need to get more control though, and so I think our 3-3-2-2 will match up better against Villa's 4-2-4. And of course we concede whilst I'm making changes. Surely that's our campaign over, just mere seconds after I daydream about winning the whole damn thing. A slight deflection there on the cross, and that's a great finish to be fair. If we have any vestige of hope, we need to respond straight away. Some matter is through, and that has got to be a penalty. It is. Surely Langley has to be off there. No attempt for the ball, no double jeopardy. That's bullshit, ref. Give us the tools, and we will finish the schwab. The bad puns are back, because so are we. 20 minutes remain. Away goals are a thing of a bygone era, and so one goal is enough to force extra time. Hell, I'm feeling lucky. We can get two and win the game outright. Especially if we restrict Villa to long shots like that. We do need to create something ourselves though, and it's unlikely Villa will be as open as they were. It just had to be that man. Despidov is a menace. Oh no bugger. Yup, went too early. One all on offside goals, still one all on the score sheet. It is encouraging though. We found space and just a little more patience from Despidov and we'd have the lead. An error here. Was that the chance? Jimus had to score there. 
Time's almost up. Sixth minute of injury time and Villa have a chance here. Another good save. That's got to be it. Even if we get the ball back now, the referee's got to blow and Tierlemans is taking his sweet time. I know I said I wouldn't string you along, and it would be awfully unreasonable for me to build this up as I have, but I also did a whole Ajax season where I got about 80% of the way through and resigned as soon as we lost the game. So I suppose you could say I have form. The final whistle doesn't seem to be forthcoming though. Into their third, Jimmer swings a boot. It's top bins. Eighth minute of six minutes added on. Can't rule that one out. Unbelievable. Oh, it's scrappy. Breaks kindly. Looks like Martinez gets a hand to it and the ball takes him with it. And breathe. See, I wasn't going to string you along this time. That said, the ref seems reluctant to blow the whistle still. Now into the 10th minute, there's not exactly a sense of urgency. Michaelidis has it deep. Finds Constantelios. Suarez is free. Jimus. Oh my days. Extra time it is. I don't know if I could handle a defeat right now. Not just this game, but we've got to win the whole thing. Jimmis' goal cannot become a side note to an unsuccessful campaign. Just as I eulogised about Charisteus' goal against France, this goal needs to be remembered as the pivotal moment in Pauk's first ever European trophy. We do need something to happen if that's going to be the case. Extra time has been uneventful as both teams look nervous and exhausted. Sometimes I should just shut up and stop going to the bloody tactic screen. I, I didn't even change anything this time. Katarski versus Watkins. He's not the greatest penalty taker, you know. In real life, at least. Here, he sends Katarski the wrong way and we're once again facing down the barrel of elimination. If we're going to turn this round, we'll need to do it in injury time once again. Lightning never strikes twice right. <laughs> I have no words. Actually, I do. Ridiculous. A slight nick off the post and we're heading to penalties. Burina. Penenka. Cheeky. Watkins. Katarski's revenge. We're actually going to do this. Kedjura missed a penalty earlier this season. Off the bar. Maybe we're not going to do this. Tierlemans. Clinical. Here comes the boy wonder. Martinez saves. Super John McGinn. He's a meatball. And he makes it 2-1. Despidov has been nothing but reliable. Not like this. We can't go through all that and lose like this. Katarski saves is there a glimmer, the faintest slither of hope. Staffelidis was bought in for his experience. He enjoys big matches. This is his moment. This is not his moment. Two penalties, two disallowed goals, two injury time equalisers, six missed penalties. What the f***? It genuinely took me a little while afterwards to digest that game. I'm still not 100% confident I'm over it. 
but there's no time to lick our wounds. Three days later, we played our final league game before preparing for the Greek Cup final against AEK. A chance for a domestic double is not to be sniffed at. Our record against AEK should inspire confidence, but having crumbled under pressure just nine days prior, that confidence might be misplaced. An early goal definitely calmed the nerves, Singaras putting the finishing touch on a lovely passing move. That should have been the catalyst for an open game, with AEK needing to chase, but whilst both teams created opportunities, neither of us could hit the target as the first half ended 1-0. Early into the second half and Samata was played in behind by Despidov, who arrived in the box at the perfect time to receive the return cross. Athanasiadis had no chance. AEK mustered very little besides a late Ponce effort, and so, cue the celebrations. I spoke in an earlier episode about burnishing our title to recognise achievements throughout the career. We have completed a domestic double and broken the tie-break with Aris for league championships. But let me introduce Yanis the Great, GSL, KEN, conqueror of the Hellenic Federation. I am not creative enough to bestow such titles upon the players too, but should anyone deserve recognition, then it's Kirill Despidov. The Bulgarian winger took to his new position with grace, finishing the season with 22 goals and 11 assists. Ali Samata was not far behind, with 20 goals in far fewer minutes. He didn't contribute much else though, Zivkovic was our creative powerhouse, laying on 18 assists and scoring 12 times 2 whilst Konstantelios was equally impressive, albeit in an injury disrupted season, where he finished with 22 goal contributions overall. My favourite player, however, is Kostas Kouliarakis. The goals were nice, sure, but it's his 80% tackles won, 74% headers won, and 93% pass completion that caught my eye. 12% of his passes were progressive too. Of course, I'm not alone in admiring our young centre-back, and the vultures are circling. I imagine we'll face an uphill battle this summer to keep our core together, and as I look to attract a higher calibre of player to improve our standing on the European stage, there might be a few surprising casualties. But that will have to wait for the next episode. See you then.